So we are here from Cadena, and we're going to tell you all about what we've been up to since we saw you this time last year here in this same location. So for those of you that are not familiar, Cadena is a hybrid blockchain platform. And what this means is that we have developed both a permissioned blockchain and a public proof of work blockchain and a smart contract language that fits on top of both. And you can write a single application that fits on top of whichever suits your needs as a developer or a business. So this is quick intro. This is Storch, co-founder. We also have Will, who's actually speaking in the other room right now. <laughs> and then I am the head of research at Cadena. And formerly, Will and Stu were at JP Morgan on the blockchain research team. Stu actually led that team before it was even the blockchain research team. And I worked with Will at the SEC. And now we do blockchain things instead. So the quick rundown on Cadena, sound bites. We have a public blockchain. It is called Chainweb. And Chainweb, we could take all hour to just talk about Chainweb, so let's not. The quick overview is that we are Bitcoin-like. We have many Bitcoin-like chains that use Nakamoto consensus to each have their own individual ledger. You can pass a transaction through any ledger, and eventually your proof of your transaction will propagate to the entire network. So we don't have to worry about staking. You don't have to worry about shard corruption. You don't have to worry about validators. You don't have to worry about who is making sure that somebody's staking my whatever on the something. No, proof of work, and we're just sticking with it. So we also have a permission blockchain. It's called Scalable BFT. And in fact, Scalable BFT has been around a lot longer than most of those other permission blockchains options that are out there. Scalable BFT is fast. It's designed to be used on commodity hardware for real production if for business. And so right now, if you would like to try Scalable BFT, you can try it on the AWS Marketplace. Just a couple clicks, and you can install your own Scalable BFT. Meanwhile, we have a smart contract language. And we could spend the whole time talking about the smart contract language, but let's not. Instead, the soundbite for PACT is that it is the simplest and safest smart contract language. Stu wrote the heart of PACT, and now we have a whole team that are up and running and developing tooling and tutorials. And we have a full formal verification system for PACT. And effectively, what that means is that you, as a user, write code, which is then verified to do what you want it to do. You can annotate it using our annotation system, and then it will prove that the code that you've just written does what you want it to do. So it's a Kadena overview. Compared to all of the other multitude of blockchain projects in the space, we are at the intersection of proof of work and a layer, base layer protocol that was designed for scalability and a smart contract platform. So if you're looking for all three of these pieces, we can help with that. So to give you a review of what we've been up to since this time last year, and to tell you where we are going from this point into the future, Stuart, to take it away. Thank you, Monica. Um, so uh, 2018 was a great year for us, but what we started off wanting to do was uh, formalize Chainweb, really uh, present the design to the community. So we went to the Stanford Blockchain Conference and presented it there, and the reaction was really great. This was seen as something that was going to add a new kind of, a major new way to talk about scaling public blockchain, uh, completely different than proof of stake, completely different than level, uh, layer two solutions. Um, off of that, we did a couple SAF rounds, uh, raised around $15 million, and, uh, and this was all funding to launch the chain web network with our Cadena coin on the network. Uh, we set out to grow our team. Uh, we started off, uh, Will and I started off as the two of us uh, spinning out of JP Morgan in 2016. Uh, we are now up to 20 people. And um, also uh, get packed to, PACT was already in production as of 2017 with our corporate clients, but we uh, got it to a feature complete state and covered all of PACT's major features with our formal verification system. So anything that you could write in PACT you could write simple proofs to get the computer to check for you whether or not uh, there are any bugs in your specification or in your implementation. So how did we do? Uh, we did our first token sale in January. Uh, that, was, that was more strategic partners, including people like Metastable, some of the smartest people in the, in the space who really got what we were trying to do and also thought it was going to present a really attractive opportunity to sophisticated miners, um, just the way that we approach proof of work, the fact that we have this uh, graph uh, configuration of many proof-of-work chains. 
uh, as I said, presented our paper at the Stanford Blockchain Conference, um, and started working on developing some of our business cases out. Uh, we, we uh, our Fortune 500 healthcare uh, consortium pilot got off the ground called the Synaptic Alliance. Um, did our second token sale, and that that brought in a lot more of the crypto community, but also some important partners like SV Agile, uh, Susquehanna, um, and uh, going into May and June, uh, the team got up to 10 employees. Uh, we released the pack language uh, with some very important features uh, that were in directly informed by the experience we were having with our corporate clients, uh, getting them more features that they needed. And in November and December, uh, Pact at that point had been open source for two years, so we had our uh, Pact anniversary and launched a Pact testnet. Uh, this is now running at pact.cadena.io, which is also uh, going to be a gateway to our uh, chain web testnet, and uh, got up to 20 employees by the end of the year, and that takes us into 2019. So what 2019 and going into the future, what did we set out to do this year? Well, the first thing we wanted, we wanted to get ChainWeb into Testnet. This is an aggressive timeline. Uh, we wanted to, we want to get ChainWeb out this year, so it was very important that we go into Testnet. Um, we wanted to, we had a bunch of uh, use cases in the pipeline, so we wanted to do business development on those. Uh, we wanted to start getting packed uh, into other environments as an, to build up the packed ecosystem. Our goal is to make packed the standard for writing safe and simple smart contract applications. Um, start our outreach to miners uh, to be uh, working with the ChainWeb project uh, and start doing some strategic fundraising uh, around the fact that we have these corporate partners and, the, and how we want to go to market with the launch of ChainWeb and our hybrid blockchain, which is applications that both use our existing private blockchain as well as the upcoming ChainWeb blockchain. Uh, and to get ChainWeb out the door by uh, fall of 2019. So where are we at now? Uh, January, uh, we uh, made we uh, uh, went into our partnership with Amazon, uh, so that now you can uh, easily deploy a small scalable BFT uh, uh, cluster and and write packed, packed applications. So that was lowering friction for corporate customers to start kicking the tires on our private blockchain application. Um, Remedy, a very innovative uh, player in the healthcare space, uh, started using Kadena for uh, really interesting work they're doing in public health using blockchain for, uh, for tracking uh, vaccine administration. It's a really interesting pilot. Um, and uh, we we added the critical new security features to PACT and got formal verification coverage for that and rolled out a module explorer where you can start exploring all the smart contracts that are already deployed. One of the things that makes uh, ChainWeb and PACT-based systems very different than something like Ethereum is that every smart contract that exists that's deployed onto a chain has a name you know, in plain text and you can go and browse the code and you can see what kind of services it offers and you can start really developing this kind of service economy uh, on chain, which is something that the Ethereum ecosystem, that's a vision of the Ethereum e ecosystem that's really failed to materialize. The idea that uh, we can all be working together as businesses to be offering on chain services to each other safely. That's, you really need uh, rock solid smart contract safety. It needs to be practically impossible for developers to write the kind of bugs we've been seeing in Ethereum, and that's why it's so important to have the formal verification coverage. Uh, to have a plain text language that's easy to understand, but is also Turing incomplete and just uh, you know written from the ground up for a single sig, multi sig, everything you need to write safe, secure, and performance smart contract applications. Uh, we set out to release ChainWeb in uh, end of March, and we nailed it. We uh, launched V0 of ChainWeb, which is the first time any network like this has ever been put out in the public. This is where you have uh, launched with a Peterson graph of ten blockchains. Um, and the interesting thing about ChainWeb is that this is 10 blockchains that are incorporating each other's uh, proof of work hashes, creating a system where no matter how big the network gets, the hash rate, the overall hash rate stays constant. So this is the key feature of ChainWeb that as you add more chains to the network, the, you don't increase energy. And the main reason why you add chains to the network is that when utilization gets up to a point where you'd start seeing congestion, the, you, the miners hard fork to another graph configuration and the network can keep growing that way, keep scaling, 
keep bringing in new uh, utilization and business cases. We launched our uh, KIP process for our fungible asset and non-fungible asset standards, and that is to uh, write what we call a better ERC-20, uh, better ERC-1420, get some of these standards uh, where, where we can actually attach formal verification proofs onto those standards so that you don't have to just trust that somebody's code got it right. You can, you can take their code off the blockchain, run it through the formal verification system, see for yourself. So, uh, and now here we are at uh, Consensus. We just announced on Monday, we're very excited about this, our partnership with USCF. Uh, th three billion asset under management uh, uh, fund, uh, fund company that is gonna be launching a new kind of, uh, new kind of instrument that uh, directly tracks a exchange traded product on the Cadena blockchain. Um, this, was a, this was a major announcement and uh, they've been a really great partner. We've been working with them about nine months so uh, we're taking the next step with them. We're very excited about that. And we also announced our launch date. We're gonna be doing a regular clip of testnet releases of Chainweb. Uh, the, t the release at the end of the month is where we're gonna start bringing in Miners uh, on a whitelist, invite only, to start uh, participating in the Cadena testnet network. And uh, um, uh, two months after that, the next version, which will be a fully public, and then uh, taking us to uh, October 30th when we launch the, test, uh, the Chainweb mainnet, which we're very, very excited about. Um, another major uh, development was the completion of a very robust security paper about the chain web model. So there's, there's been a bunch of proposals for how you could scale horizontally scale out a proof of work blockchain, um, but there's been concerns that you could do things like leverage the fact that at any point in the network, the fact that there's less hash power on an individual chain could lead to censorship. Uh, we worked with, uh, Monica worked with uh, Gauntlet a firm coming out of the HFT space to do agent-based simulation. So this is something where we're no longer talking about Sybil attacks or black hat, white hat. We're talking about a, a basically a swarm of, un of rational actors who will, uh, who will censor if it makes them money. They will, they will put the resources forward if it actually adds up to alpha, if it actually adds up to something where they'll make a profit. And the paper conclusively proves that it is more in the economic interest of the chain web miner to operate in a fashion that coordinates with other miners on the chain web network than to try to censor transactions and do double spends. Um, and so as a, as a result, chain web really offers an attractive uh, option to miners who really want to use their hash power in intelligent ways. Um, so that paper is coming out at Euro s and in August, and uh, it's, it's a really exciting thing to have finished this very in-depth security analysis of a new public blockchain. So that takes us into October 30th, where we're gonna, we're gonna launch Chainweb Mainnet, and, you know, and the idea here is that for the first time, you're gonna have a public blockchain, and you're gonna have entirely private blockchains that can speak the same language. You can write a smart contract application really easily in PACT, uh, the idea is that Chainweb is a multi-chain environment, so we had to solve the problem to make it that software developers could write smart contracts that can run on multiple chains without the developers having to be like crazy geniuses who know how to do, uh, you know, Merkle-based proofs for sending information across chains. So we've gotten to that point where the PAC language allows you to write in a kind of like chain oblivious manner where you can scale your transaction over as many chains as you want. By that same token, you can easily move things off-chain into private environments, uh, leveraging the proof-of-work uh, Merkle structures to prove things that have happened on-chain. You can uh, either leverage, be, you know, take advantage of the enhanced privacy, uh, things that are available only in a private environment, such as confidential transactions, and then you can push those back into the public chain with whatever kind of Oracle-based structure or staking structure you want to kind of underscore whatever security model you want to do to take stuff from outside the public environment and push it back into the public environment, and you can do this all with a single, extremely easy to use and extremely safe smart contract language packed. And that's launching October 30th. Yes. So I know I'm supposed to do these slides, but you're killing it. You just keep going. <laughs> you're, you're killing it. Just keep going. So yeah, so, the, so where are we going from here? So you know, the announcement of the USA, USCF is a very big deal, and you're going to be seeing more announcements coming from us in the upcoming months. Um, we have partners in commercial insurance. 
We have partners uh, in, real, in real estate tokenization. There's a lot, and we have people doing uh, data markets for originating loans, and, and, and we have people, most importantly, we have people who have tried to roll uh, solutions out onto Ethereum who are now gonna be making a switch onto the Cadena platform and launching with us when we go live on October 30th. Uh, the main verticals we're working in is insurance, and that's both commercial insurance as well as health insurance, uh, healthcare, real estate, uh, fintech. We're from J.P. Morgan, so we have a lot of understanding. Uh, my background is in uh, d designing algorithmic trading systems for 15 years, um, but also in banking, and uh, and we have some interesting international use cases coming online as far away as Turkey. Uh, we have partners in Mexico working with different exchanges on some really interesting um, tokenization strategies. And uh, the, the point here is that the unified vision is that everybody's seeing the value. I, I mean, a scalable proof of work blockchain is a game changer. You can start thinking about things you simply couldn't do before. Um, a lot of netting that goes on right now in exchanges is based on the fact that it's so, that it's so problematic to, net thing, to uh, book things out to something like Bitcoin that's gonna stop being a problem with something like ChainWeb. So there's entire new business models that are gonna start emerging when you can really leverage the public infrastructure to kind of get a critical uh, competitive advantage for your product and then be able to leverage private blockchain to, to you know, gain all the safety and confidentiality that that brings. Um, so we're starting off, uh, where we're at right now is we're doing a lot of, a lot of our work coming out of a, a more private focus is um, doing pilots with our partners such as USCF um, and getting our testnet launched. So, uh, you know, in the fourth quarter we launched the public chain and the idea here is that this, we've had growth from the start from when we founded um, in kind of directly working with corporate partners, but the, the vision here is that as the, as the public chain gets adopted, that becomes kind of more the focus. I mean, this is one of our theses that really drove us to doing work in public was that the innovation for blockchain is gonna happen on the public side. Business needs to see public blockchain doing things safely, doing things right before we're really gonna see the adoption of privacy. So you see the public growth happen. Um, and as these things start to, get, start to come together, the network surrounding the Cadena technology really comes together and then at, by that time, we're, we're, you're gonna see Pact on different platforms. We're talking about putting Pact on any scalable platform that can handle it. So that would include platforms like Cosmos or uh, blockchains that like, we got approached by a CDN that has a blockchain platform and they wanna put Pact on top of that. Um, the idea that you can have a portable smart contract standard that works in a variety of environments, I mean, you could even use Pact as an excellent language for just writing a database application. It's more safe than almost any other solution you could use. And, it, and with that, the kind of uh, the growth of transactions and, and the kind of solidification of the chain web network really puts us in a different place with blockchain and really takes us to where we start seeing the kind of adoption that is why we're all here, is what we're all shooting for, is to really drive the transformation with scalable, safe technologies for blockchain. Thank yes. you very much. Have uh, some time for questions. You crushed it. <laughs> All right, does anyone uh, have a question out there in the audience? I have a couple, um, so sure. I'll start it off. Um, I think one of the things when you look at, you know, especially like the rise of specifically just private blockchains and you know, enterprise blockchain and all of this, um, you know, I think I was guilty of this in the past, probably a few years ago, I think we all were, you know, blockchains are gonna solve everything, like everything's gonna be on a blockchain, blah, blah, blah. Um, probably not the case. I know you mentioned kind of what you guys are covering and you know, who you're partnering with. Um, so, you know, where do you see, maybe the, the question is, where do you see the best applications for your technology, you know, in the enterprise or, or wherever, uh, whatever space? Or maybe where do you see it actually not being important? Like maybe where do we not need a blockchain? Um, I think actually one of the, uh, that's a question that, that comes up a lot, and we're both minimalists and maximalists in our way. Um, Pact is really designed as against the idea of like a world computer that you're gonna be doing just anything on a blockchain in the first place. Um, but that doesn't mean, there's actually a lot of things that you can do on Pact a lot easier than any other smart contract language. You can do a multi-sig wallet in Pact. I mean, you can't even not do a multi-sig wallet in Pact. So that's the kind of thing so certain things are much easier, but I actually feel like the real thing is that um, a lot of the things that really make sense for crypto 
are going to work on a network, and they're going to be incredibly easy to build. Here's what's really going to change is the kinds of things where crypto maybe isn't the, is, is only like 40% of your business plan. But you have like an idea for something where you can really leverage crypto to bring a different product out to market. Right now, the amount of investment in specialized knowledge and, uh, you know, if you wanted to roll an application out to something like Ethereum right now, you have to make a major investment for something that ultimately might be a very small part of your overall strategy. And what we're going to see is that increasingly it's going to be much easier for people to bring these kinds of like ancillary products that I think are really is what kind of weirdly is what I think is going to make the ecosystem really grow is that you start having this diversity of products out there. Yeah, I think to make it a more concrete in terms of example, we've looked at partnering with a company that does personal data that right now what they do is they essentially build a profile for you and then you can go out and like try to get a loan or something. And right now that process, like they're already making money with it. They, they have a business, it's not related to blockchain at all. But they're interested in exploring the possibility of having something where people can actually have more ownership and control over their, more, over their information, which then in turn would allow agencies to feel like they could give up control of more of their data. Because instead of it going to some data clearinghouse where they're eventually going to get hijacked like Equifax and then they're going to have to pay out the nose for it, you're giving the data back to people and they're much more interested in that kind of a project. So you could have a, a crypto adjacent, there's much more synergy here that once we start to see blockchain adopted with better tooling, that's going to be safer for them to, to use. And you can hook it into existing systems because you don't have to worry about, is this on public blockchain? Is this on a private blockchain? You can potentially do both. Then we'll start to see these applications that are, could be fringe, but actually starting to come to fruition in the future. That actually brings up a, a really interesting point. Um, you know, a lot of the conversations we've had today have kind of focused around, like, you know, I'll join you up here. Why not? Yeah, get up yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, This is the whole thing. The camera can get me now. Um, but we, we, we've heard a, we've heard a lot of uh, people talking about, you know, business development and go to go to market strategies and things like that. Um, for you, I, I think that's probably interesting. You know, like, how do you kind of see what you need to do? Um, because you know, public chains really just go after developers, and that's all they want: developers, developers, developers. Whereas, you know, enterprise chains, they're really, we need to go to corporations and we need to de develop business. It's more of like a, like a sales cycle. You know, it's almost more, you know, we need to partner, we need to do POCs, we need to go through this process. Um, you guys are kind of a hybrid, so I don't know if that really makes a difference for you, like, difference for you if you have to go to developers, enterprises, whatever it is. Um, I mean, we're painfully aware of the latter. Uh, <laughs> very familiar with the enterprise sales cycle. Um, but, you know, one thing is that's interesting is that our backgrounds, you know, I, I've been doing industrial software since the 90s. Also, we have great reg background with my co-founder who came out of the SEC. Uh, that background, one, has people coming to us to talk about interesting cases, and two, it allows us to kind of speak more directly to the problems we're trying to, problems they're trying to solve. Um, so, uh, you know, so that, that's, that's one difference. When, that's, so we don't approach it from a funnel, kind of sales funnel point of view. We, we approach it from more a partnership point of view on the private side. So, and then likewise, we really see that being something that's, that we're, we're going to be able to leverage that to demonstrate usage on the public chain and demonstrate new um, use cases that we feel will really drive the developers. Because, I mean, one of the things that blockchain is supposed to do is it's supposed to not just decentralize the assets and make certain things available to consumers. It's supposed to do that for developers, too. You're supposed to be able to leverage these technologies quickly and easily to roll out a secure, crypto-backed application, you know, and not, and you don't necessarily have to do a huge token raise and waste and raise twenty million dollars. Although, you know, good for you if you do, but you know, but you shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to like pilot these things with relatively low effort. And so, that, I think that's the kind of different spin we have on the developers, developers, developers approach. Also, I think we've seen that whole uh, attack angle get a little bit questioned. You know, last year a lot of that was like. Every time someone wanted to talk about a new project and their token economists are like, oh, yeah, but what about your users? What about your communities? Largely based on how Ethereum came about. Um, but, you know, Ethereum is, a, is turning out to be kind of a historically specific example. You know, and, and they really did a lot of the hefty, heavy lifting for all of us in that regard, too, in the sense that they got developers trying these tools out. They got developers thinking about how do you try to do these kinds of applications in public. But I think those of us who are coming after uh, are, are going to approach it in a slightly different way, where um, there's so much, uh, you know, trapped uh, utility 
for lack of a better term. All these things that you can't do right now easily, that when you can do those easily, one, business is gonna start uh, realizing this huge strategic advantage from there being this public scalable infrastructure out there. And that's just gonna naturally, I mean, developer, it's like you can make money with your own business, you can go get a job for an enterprise doing this stuff, it's gonna start really being the kind of thing where it's gonna be a no-brainer for a developer to wanna learn how to use these tools. I think the last point was a very important point where you said, uh, I can go get a job for an enterprise doing this or I can start my own company doing this. Right. Like, as a developer, I do things in my spare time as a hobby, but at the end of the day, the language that I use is the one for which I get paid to do my job. And so we're going to see a lot more adoption when we see people actually working with companies to build projects using Pact. And so we're less worried about like grassroots developer adoption with hobbyists and more about, oh, you have an idea and you want to build a company? Great, we're here for you. Yeah, that's interesting. It's almost like this positive feedback loop you guys can kind of, you know, this flywheel you can uh, drive off of, you know, you have, so you guys are pushing the adoption at these enterprises or for, you know, companies spinning up new projects or whatever it may be, and then people start learning the, the language and then they can go to these companies, they know they're gonna have a job. Um, very interesting. Yeah. Um, any questions out there in the audience? I think we have a, a couple more minutes. Awesome. Any miners out there? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a mining project right now, so if you want to talk about mining, come find oh. me over there later. Yeah, actually, that's what I was going to ask about. Is oh, great. Oh, great. What the, what the process is and how you're going to bring miners on board and what, are the, what is the structure of it going to be and that, that's what I, how we can find out about that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So you can find out about that. So we have a Discord channel where you can just come and ask us any of these kinds of questions that you have. But to for a short answer is right now we are working with people in the mining community, people that have large mining farms, people that are hardware manufacturers, in order to try and figure out what the best fit is going to be for us in terms of choosing a proof of work algorithm. Right now we are not sold on what we're going to use for our algorithm and obviously everybody here is aware of all of the potential risks involved in choosing an algorithm that doesn't fit the correct profile for what you're trying to do. So we're looking at a whole suite of different options right now but we, when we know what we're going to do, we will tell you. So the short answer is to sign up for our mining interest list and just hit us up on Discord. Yeah. All right, I think uh, we have time for one more question. Anyone out there? All right, well I think that right. about does it. Thank you very much for the time. And yeah. Yeah.